Take a look at what happened. There is no place in America for this kind of violence. Please welcome the next president of the United States, President Donald J. Trump. Trump can be synonymous with chaos. As of today, you could say the same about American politics. It's in serious turmoil, in large part because of the assassination attempt on Donald Trump. It has sparked a security nightmare, and the fallout is scary. In the last 24 hours, a series of events have unfolded at the Republican National Convention. One man was shot dead just two blocks away from the convention venue. Two knives were recovered from him. In a separate incident, the local police arrested a man. He was trying to approach the convention venue with an AK-47. The rifle had a full magazine. And the man carrying it was wearing a ski mask. He did not have a permit to carry the gun. The weapon was found hidden inside a large backpack. The man was trying to conceal it. But what was he doing with an AK-47? And that too near the Republican convention. We're waiting to hear from the investigators. But clearly, the security threat still persists. And at this rate, it's becoming one of the most challenging presidential elections in America. Every day, new threats are coming to light. The Secret Service has stepped up security around Trump. Yesterday, he made another appearance at the convention. And this time, too, he was welcomed with loud cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the next president of the United States. President Donald J. Trump. Yesterday, Trump secured his nomination. It was unanimous. Some of his fiercest critics are also coming around now. They're rallying behind the former president, like Nikki Haley. A few months ago, Nikki Haley was putting up a fight challenging Donald Trump during the primaries. But yesterday, she offered her full-throated support to him. I'll start by making one thing perfectly clear. Donald Trump has my strong endorsement, period. If we have four more years of Biden or a single day of Harris, our country will be badly worse off. For the sake of our nation, we have to go with Donald Trump. Another endorsement came from Ron DeSantis. He, too, is a former rival. At one point, he was among the favorites to secure a presidential nomination from the Republican Party. Ron DeSantis ran an aggressive campaign against Donald Trump. He was called Trump Light. But his campaign tanked spectacularly, and now he has pledged his loyalties to Trump. Let's send Joe Biden back to his basement and let's send Donald Trump back to the White House. We need a commander in chief who can lead 24 hours a day and seven days a week. America cannot afford four more years of a weekend at Bernie's presidency. Trump is taking this convention by storm. So is the bandage on his ear. It has become a powerful metaphor, a campaigning tool even. Trump supporters are showing up with bandaged ears in a mark of solidarity. The internet is abuzz. Bandage memes are going viral. Take a look at this. There is a clear Trump wave and the Republicans are trying to make the most of it. They're trying to woo young voters. And leading the charge here is Vivek Ramaswamy, another former presidential hopeful who challenged Trump in the primaries. He's now aggressively campaigning for Trump and his choice for vice president, J.D. Vance. Yesterday, Ramaswamy made an outreach to the Gen Z voters. And our message to Gen Z is this. You're going to be the generation that actually saves this country. You want to be a rebel? You want to be a hippie? You want to stick it to the man? Show up on your college campus and try calling yourself a conservative. If you're at home and you disagree with everything I just said, our message to you is this. We will still defend to the death your right to say it. 
So that's the Republican Party, all charged up and firing as one. But what about the other side, the Democrats? Joe Biden resumed his campaign events yesterday. He'd paused them after the Trump shooting. Now the president is back in action. He made an appearance in Las Vegas, where he tried his best to match the energy of the other side, but couldn't. Biden did make a significant statement, though. He endorsed Kamala Harris. Listen to this. Folks, it's because of you that I'm president and Kamala Harris is vice president. And by the way, she's not only a great vice president, she could be president of the United States. Is Biden dropping a hint here? Will he make way for Kamala Harris? Is she going to replace him? Unlikely at this point. Biden still wants to carry on. He's not willing to step aside, even when some Democrats are trying to block his nomination. The Democratic Convention is scheduled for the 19th of August, so about a month to go. And Biden is steadily losing support. There are loud whispers of a rebellion, especially among the Democrats elected to the U.S. Congress. They want to delay Biden's planned nomination so the Democratic Convention could turn into a showdown. And that would lead to more political turmoil, the very prospect of which is making Americans nervous. Look at the findings of a new poll. Four out of five Americans fear that their country is sliding into chaos. They fear more political violence in the days ahead. And you can't say the fears are unfounded. They're living through dangerous times in a democracy in decline. Across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree a News 18 Network initiative. On the fifth day, the 2020 World Cup run by the Indians moved across to the West Indies. What can you expect? Hello, I'm Alice Green, coming to you from Durban, South Africa. Today, we have a special show. Start with a report on India's cystic nuclear cost. Hello and welcome to First Post America. I'm Eric Ham, coming to you live from the nation's capital. 